Okay, so we just posted our first exercise. Now it's time to start exercise two. So within my digital art class folder, I'm going to make a quick folder for exercise number two. And it will have different assets and references. If we wanted to jump to it, we can just go to assignments off of the home page and go right to where it says exercise two. But in this video and available for you under unit modules, I'll take you through past examples and through the explanation of what we're doing. So we're sticking with the band book theme. You've already chosen a book for your jumble. You're now going to keep that book in mind and we're going to try to communicate it in a different way. We're going to try communicating it through making a custom emoji. Right? Emojis are omnipresent, right? They're these scalable images that are like fonts and they are designed with vectors so that they can be used on different devices at different sizes whether they're simple or complicated. So that's the first thing you need to know. Let's look at some past examples and looking under unit modules to see what skills we're learning with this project. So we're moving on to unit three, which is just our introduction, the simplest form of introduction to a digital skill called vector shapes. Vectors are different than pixel-based images. Vectors are based on cutouts. And because of that, they have a lot of advantages that we'll be exploring later. Vectors are how you make logo designs. It's how you make uh, typography and type design. And our class is a lot about learning how that can mingle with raster pixel-based design to do a variety of things like make posters. The only deliverable for this unit is the shape composition exercise. And the skill you're building is to build with vector shapes an image that is original, even though it's going to be based on something that we build. Emojis, these are some past student examples. This is an emoji for Lord of the Flies. This is an emoji for the hate you give. This is an emoji for Fight Club. So you can kind of see how you have new challenges now <laughs> with how to communicate through something as simple as an emoji. But the real skill is just building with vector shapes. So we're going to start with a program or just a site called Emoji Maker, which is really basic, which uses vector shapes and lets you layer them up. We're then, then going to use that as a guide to build our own shapes on top of. Vectors cannot be copied from anything online. They have to be built because vectors are not pixel based and everything online is pixel based. So. Whenever you see a vector online, you're seeing a pixel representation of it at whatever resolution that screen is. So what is different about a vector? You can see it right here. Vectors are created with paths, which are anchor points with vector lines between them. Those vector lines can be straight or they can be curved. They create paths you can think of them as outlines around the vector shape. So think of that as cutting out from paper. Those cutouts can then be really, really big or really, really small, all from the same file. So resolution does not apply to them. And then those, those vector shapes can be filled with color. They can be filled with texture. They can be filled with gradations. But they will always have a very defined edge. So the only way to make a vector shape look like it doesn't have a clean edge is to bleed off its color content in a gradation to a zero opacity color. <laughs> and then it will kind of fade out. You don't see that very often. So usually you see vectors as kind of clean cutouts. And so that's why emojis are a good example of their use. And they're often clean cutouts that are just overlapping each other. So think of this as I'm giving you each a pad of construction paper with lots of different colors. And in order to build an emoji out of that, you have to cut shapes out of different sheets of, of paper. And then we can add the texture and the effects after. As always, if you want to see how this is done, 
get ahead of yourself before I demonstrate it. You can look at past student examples or past demos. And you can see here with last semester's emoji. I started doing the emojis during the pandemic. It's a fun way of, of testing these skills. And this last semester's took seven videos. So it does not need to take a long time. So that's not even two hours to build it. But you have to kind of know what you're getting into. So we already know what our banned books are. So next, we're going to go to this site. It's emojimaker.flat-icons.com. And whenever you open the site, it randomly generates a different emoji for you. You have these criteria. You have the background. You have the eyes. You have the mouth elements. You have the accessory elements. And you get to scroll through those, right? So if I wanted to add glasses to this guy, I can do that. If I wanted to add monkey, monkey hands, I could do that. If I wanted to add curse words, I could do that. On and on and on. Here's the problem. When you you have to identify which ones are there so you can turn them off, right? So it's pretty simple programming. And so I'm going to turn off everything. But it helps you kind of see what some of the options are. And luckily, there are not so many options. There are a lot of mouths, but there aren't so many options that you're going to get decision fatigue, hopefully. And you want to keep it pretty simple because this is not your final project. This is just a guide for your final project or your final exercise. So I need to look for the one that's a little bit darker than the others. There it is. And that's how you know it's selected. You have to look for the eyes that are a little bit darker than the others. And it's just a little subtle, but there it is. Okay. And then we start with the background shape. So if we're cutting these out of pieces of paper, what's the big primary foundational shape? Is it going to be a ghost shape, <laughs> which unfortunately is the same gray as this background? So it's there, but you can't see it. Appropriate for a ghost. Is it this kind of like guitar pick shape, kind of alien head shape? Is it this purple horn shape? Is it this skull shape? The ghost thing is hilarious. Is it the poop shape? Is it the Japanese demon mask shape? Is it the Cartman shape? You know, whatever. Whatever you choose. So I'm doing The Outsiders. The Outsiders is about human people. So I think I'll just stick with the default kind of yellow, at least to start with. This, this can always change later. Everyone with me so far? There's like robot shapes. There's mind blown shapes. All kinds of things. Okay, now for eyes. Let me see. I want kind of maybe something that looks a little beaten up. Again, it's about kind of youth violence. And there are a lot of eyes. And you can layer up multiples. So sometimes I'll do that at this stage. So there's like the goofy eyes there. There's the X'd out eyes. I know I've done the X'd out eyes before. In this program, you can't change the color of them, but you'll be able to as you customize your, your actual project. And I wish you could change the placement of them too. I'd like to like just move those down underneath. But the reason I show it to you this way first, that kind of works, is it shows you the limitations already inherent in vectors. It doesn't feel quite as direct as drawing something for yourself, right? You have to kind of work within the systems. But there are benefits to it that we will learn. So if I can give this kind of a black eye, that would be great. Let me see. Oh, and then just like vectors, notice that as you click on them, they layer on top of the others. So if you want something behind something else, you just have to turn it off and then layer it back on top, like they're cutouts of paper. So 
I think I want these dark kind of alien eye shadows underneath everything. So I'm just going to layer a lot and then put my eyes back on top. <laughs> Maybe I don't want the alien eyes. There we go. So I get what looks a little bit like black eyes. Yeah, I kind of like that, what's going on there. Let me get rid of these. All right. Next, I can play with the mouth elements. I want something kind of weird. And I want something a little aggressive. There's a good one for censorship, but that's not what this book is about. And again, you can kind of layer things up. Try to keep it simple because you're going to be recreating all of this with vector tools. Let's see. And like a lot of digital art, you just have to kind of try things out and be patient to find what you think will work. Okay, so kind of working within the tools, figuring it out. Accessories. This is where you can do things like hats, glasses. Different features. And what I'm hoping we will do by the end of class today is create this and then post it. We're just going to do a screen grab of it. Very simple. We can export it too, but this is just a guide for, for what we're going to build. All right. And then we can always add to this and adjust it in Photoshop. So I want to add kind of the 50s hair. It's probably in good taste, but they don't have anything about someone smoking. They do have the bandages, which is kind of helpful and clever. <laughs> 